Let's say you drive 10,000 miles a year and you use a car that's reasonably efficient like a Tesla Model 3 long range like I have at the moment. 10,000 miles divided by four and a half miles per kilowatt hour equals 2,222 kilowatt hours of energy that you need. Now, if you times that by a cheap electricity tariff, like I'm paying overnight, I'm seven pence per kilowatt hour, that means that costs me 155 pounds to cover 10,000 miles of driving. And that's cheap, isn't it? So if you're a petrol or diesel driver, you can see the sort of numbers you can say with uh, an electric vehicle. Uh, so in this video, uh, I'm gonna to talk to you about getting cheap home energy uh, and cheap work energy potentially as well. Now we've got solar and battery storage here. And I've also recently implemented some battery storage, but not solar at home. So I'm gonna basically in this video talk to you about uh, how that works and how to get cheap energy and how cheap an electric car can actually be to run. Again, we do see the headlines, of course, electric cars cost more than petrol and diesel, but it's a complete load of nonsense. It's all about the energy tariffs and it's all about uh, smart energy and it's all about um, saving a fortune at the end of the day, but it also helps the grid out as well. Again, the headlines over the previous years that electric cars are going to crash the energy grid is complete nonsense as well. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you exactly what we've got for energy. So, right, let's cover a few facts. Now, of course, with 10,000 miles there, I'm excluding uh, charging away from home at public charges, which can, uh, obviously, they do cost more. But normally, with your day-to-day -day driving, you're going to charge probably at home, maybe at your workplace. Uh, but firstly, let's cover what we've got here at work. So in our offices and warehouse here, uh, we've got 62 solar panels on the roof. Now, commercial buildings lend themselves really perfectly to having uh, solar panels because you've got massive flat roof spaces that are easy to put loads of solar panels on. We then got two Tesla power walls for battery storage here. And of course, in the daytime, the sun's out, it creates energy and that powers this light bulb, but it also charges our cars. Now, bear in mind, we're a business that's reasonably energy intensive because we're charging electric cars day in, day out. Now, over the course of a whole year, we run about 70% off grid. Uh, in the summer, off grid just about all of the time. In the winter, less so because obviously the days are much shorter and we still have the daily energy demands here. And of course, this is a business where we're here in the daytime using the energy we're mainly producing off of the roof. In fact, it saved us over 16,000 pounds in electricity last year alone. And I've been doing monthly videos going through, you know, how we got on that month of our energy uses and production. Uh, but solar and batteries cost money, I hear you say. Well, I'm going to talk to you about that soon. So yes, when I've got the solar and batteries for here, and I'll go into my home setup in a minute because I've got a new setup there. Uh, now, the, basically, the investment was about £40,000. Now, you do also get a, 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 a first-year capital allowance when you buy things like solar and battery storage. So there are some tax incentives. You don't need to pay the VAT. So you can actually, it actually owes me about £35,000, £36,000. So that's a lot of money to recoup, isn't it? Well, if you look at it like that, yes, but we're saving over £16,000 a year. But in reality, installing that, investing in that, added to the value of this building that I own. And therefore, it's not really costing me money at all. In fact, it's worth more than that investment just for the fact that this building is now largely off-grid. And certainly for most other people, if they're using this building, they'll be off-grid and export an energy. When we have spare energy, it actually gets exported back out to the grid, using the daytime, probably that building over there, the other warehouse needs energy, and it probably goes down and out and back round into there. So we actually help the grid out, especially on nice sunny days. So I've covered some videos about our energy here at our offices, but what about my home? So in September in 2023, I moved house, and I have a lovely new house now, and it's brilliant. But it's a period house, it's an 1890s house, and it doesn't really lend itself to sticking some great big solar panels on the roof. It has a roof that could take it, but it just wouldn't look right. And on the first admit, with a lot of houses, just sticking a rectangular solar panel doesn't look brilliant. I don't mind having the solar tiles when they start becoming more of a thing, uh, but I'm not really sure on what my solution is for home yet, except, I did get uh, contacted from somebody I know uh, towards the end of the year who had a couple of Tesla power walls to sell. They were changing the system in the house and basically I managed to buy a couple of used Tesla power walls for good money, I think. Um, now Tesla power walls and battery storage and other battery systems are out there. Uh, but essentially what I did was put the uh, battery storage into my house, but without solar panels. Now, how does that work? Well, basically, overnight, I charge the batteries up and then they discharge in the day. 
Overnight, I get cheap electricity. And with a smart energy tariff, and there's a number of smart energy tariffs out there at the moment, if I happen to drop the name, look, others are out there. Um, but with a smart energy, energy tariff between 11.30 at night and 5.30 in the morning, I get electricity at seven pence per kilowatt hour. Compared to the normal domestic cap rate at the moment, it's about 27 and a half, 28 pence per kilowatt hour. So therefore, the energy overnight is much cheaper. It helps the grid. They've got all that energy they've had to get into the grid for the evening, and then suddenly no one wants it during the nighttime. Well, that's when I then harvest that energy, put it into my battery storage. Now, two tests of power walls can store about 28 kilowatt hours of energy. Um, I don't have a very energy efficient home. Uh, we've got a, a ch child and the TV's on and there's consoles and we've got, you know, always lights left on as anyone with kids I'm sure will testify. Uh, so we get through quite a lot of electricity. In fact, we've been averaging about 20 kilowatt hours a day, which is quite a lot. The average in the UK for the residents to consume is about eight kilowatt hours a day. So we're quite a high energy uses home and we have two electric cars as well. So. What I've got is enough storage at night time to then power the house all through the day, all through the evening, dishwasher, washing machine, no problem, all running off of the cheap electricity. And then our cars, of course, can charge overnight on that cheap energy as well. Now, now what some people say is, yeah, but you only get the cheap energy for a few hours. So that's certainly enough time to charge up my batteries. In fact, more than enough time. With the electric cars, is it enough time to charge an electric car? Well, if it's charging at seven kilowatts, not potentially not in full, but what is quite interesting, if you take a tariff, uh, for example, uh, Octopus Go, with a, most manufacturers, not most, with a number of manufacturers, including VW, Audi, Tesla, um, and it's on their website, which manufacturers are linked with, you pay your car as part of that tariff, and they can control when your car starts and stops its charging. This was the interesting bit that I didn't know about before. So for example, I get home with my Tesla and I just say, look, by eight in the morning, I want that car to be 80% charged. Now I know the cheap energy is between 11.30 at night and 5.30 in the morning, the whole house gets that, but they lay out a charging plan on the app that says, actually tonight, we looks like we're probably gonna start charging your car at half past nine or 10 p.m. They lay it out each day if it's of interest. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. I'll just get home, plug the car in. It doesn't start charging until they want it to start charging. So Octopus actually starts your car charging for you. I never realized this before. I know a fair bit about electric cars and energy, but I didn't know this before. Uh, so actually you can, might see your car start charging even 8 p.m. in the evening. Depends on the energy demands and the energy in the grid on that day. Uh, but it will then be charged up for next morning. There could, I guess, be some potential scenarios where you, um, if you get home with a big battery car and it's very low on energy and it doesn't start charging until 11.30, would it actually be charged by first in the morning? Well, if you lift it to the automated, uh, maybe, you do kind of say, well, look, I want that car charged by eight, um, but you can also just bump it and charge it anyway. But that would only be a case where you get home late at night, low energy, and you've got to go out next morning with full battery, which you don't normally really have that kind of scenario. Um, but it's just brilliant. So battery storage at home means my house now runs off of very cheap energy. Um, the cars run off of very cheap energy and it helps the grid out. And it's just a brilliant solution. In fact, it will get smarter and smarter. Eventually we'll have a thing called vehicle to grid where you could have your car plugged in outside the house, it's charging away, then there's a half time in the football, everybody goes and puts the kettle on, it's known that there's a spike in electricity when there's an advert break, for example. And actually your car could discharge back to the house and basically boil your kettle and help the grid and then it starts charging up again once the spike's gone. That isn't really a thing uh, in the UK yet. It's probably coming in general. So that's where things are going with uh, smart energy. Uh, but I thought it was a very good, clever solution. So what about the investment in that? Well, again, it does take investment potentially, um, but again, you'll probably add to the value of the property by having that sort of smart energy solutions. Again, if I sell my house today, I can say, well, look, my house runs off of this battery system and I get cheap energy. And for the investment of that, which is, um, you know, not too much at the end of the day, a couple of power was bought for 4,000 and then the installation with a new Tesla gateway, it was another couple of thousand on top of that. Um, but it would have added to the value of the property, I'm sure, by at least that amount. So I just literally make savings from the word go. The other thing that's been quite interesting as well is um, uh, what Tesla have released recently on their cars, which is a, a charge on solar. Now we have had this before and there have been like, for example, Zappy chargers and uh, various systems where you can say, well look, I'm plugged in at home and 
Um, we're producing solar that's charging batteries and one, running the washing machine. But if they're spare, rather than it going to the grid, charge the car up a little bit. And then when there isn't spare, you know, and all that kind of thing, it stops. Well, that's been around for a while, but Tesla now have it on their cars. So again, here, I can come in to work in the morning, plug my car in. It can say, right, charge to X amount anyway. So it can charge to say 50%. And then you say, well, it charge to 80% or 90% or 100% if there's spare solar. And that's working here. And we have three testers on our fleet here that we run. We've got that set up on the cars and that works brilliantly. So it just kind of goes, well, actually like now, the sun's just come out. I don't think there's anything particularly plugged in, probably a low energy demand. Our batteries are probably full up. And so then it will put a bit of energy into my car. Uh, any spare energy still that's left, then I can sell back to the grid. In fact, I can sell to the grid, I think it's 15 pence per kilowatt hour here as a commercial rate. Uh, and then at home, I buy it for seven pence per kilowatt hour. So if anything, I can do it charging up batteries at home overnight and then discharge them in a day. But anyway, you kind of get the idea of how smart energy solutions are really working out there. And in fact, when you have energy that cheap, the energy efficiency of the car in a way becomes slightly less important. So let me do some maths again. So I'm going to take 10,000 miles again and divide that by a far less energy efficient car. Now, I did run a Porsche Taycan for a very long time. It has sold and gone now, which I'm quite sad about. I love that car, but obviously running the Tesla Model 3, although that's now 5,000 miles, that's due to be sold soon. Anyway, that's another video. Let's take a less energy efficient electric car, 10,000 miles, divide it, say, 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, I used to get more like three in the Taycan, but let's be conservative, three, point, that's three and a half thousand kilowatt hours of energy, divide that by the 0 0.07, cheap energy. That means I could cover, and I've just messed up the calculations there, 10,000, divide that by 2.8, multiply that by 0 0.07, 250 pounds. So even with a not very energy efficient electric car, and maybe something big like the Audi e-tron here, which is like a Range Rover, that means you could run that for potentially 250 pounds a year in fuel costs as such. So it's hard to argue with those kind of numbers, isn't it? And I know when I actually just run those numbers by uh, Gintz behind the camera there, he winced and yeah, you know, because you run a petrol car, don't you Gintz? And it is a bit expensive. So there are a lot of savings to be had. And then you add into the fact you've got um, uh, less maintenance and servicing of electric cars unless you don't have clutches and water pumps and cam belts and stuff like that. Uh, Tesla's don't even actually have a service routine, in fact. So there are a lot of savings to be had. And then you've got the tax savings. If you're a company or you own a company and you buy an electric car, again, you've got things like first-year capital allowances and tax incentives. If the company owns a vehicle and you get to drive it, you, you have a company car, you'll pay benefit in kind tax. Now, if that's a BMW 330, it's going to be quite a lot of money. Even if it's a Ford Mondeo diesel, it's going to be at least a couple of pounds a month. If you have an electric car, it'd probably be more like 20 pounds a month. So again, a ton of savings to be had there. Uh, now, when you charge away from home, if you travel around a lot, of course you will pay higher fees when you do public charging. At the moment, so there's a quite a difference. A lot of the Tesla uh, superchargers are about 39 pence per kilowatt hour. So they are um, actually quite reasonably priced, I think. In fact, some of them are cheaper than that. And again, there's variable tariffs depending on location and time of day. Uh, but most public chargers are quite expensive and I think they should be coming down. Again, we had a conversation about this earlier. I mean, energy prices have been falling and yet public rapid charging prices are still quite high, typically more like 69, 70 pence per kilowatt hour. So that's quite a lot. Now we did maths before, we've done other videos before where we run uh, a car and we use the public charging, we work out the cost of that. And if you use those expensive public chargers per mile, that would work out to a similar cost per mile of a fairly efficient diesel, like a sort of 45, 50 miles per gallon diesel or an efficient petrol car. Um, but when people bring, bring these headlines or say, yeah, but charging your car is really expensive, bring it back to this, that most of the time, my car charges either at home at seven pence per kilowatt hour, um, or here at work off of our solar for free. So again, when I say at seven pence per kilowatt hour, it's going to cost me 100, just 155 pounds a year. Well, take into account, actually, I normally charge at work and that's off the solar and therefore it's free as such. Um, so yes, the mother public charger is expensive. Um, it should be cheaper, but actually you don't do that much of it typically because typically you would charge at home or workplace. Uh, and then you, on some occasions you will charge at the more expensive. It's like paying for a normal petrol or diesel, except the rest of the time you just charge at home or work. 
The difficulty with the more expensive public charging is, of course, if you rely on that because you do not have home or workplace charging. And that's where the challenges come in, in terms of having an electric car if you don't have the facility to charge at home. You live in a terrace, you have a, uh, a flat with communal parking and stuff like that. And those are challenges that we need to work around. And there are some solutions coming in through with um, you know, charge posts that can go in the ground and the street lamp charging. Uh, but we need to see more of that because that is still the challenge that needs to be addressed really with uh, electric cars um, if you don't have a home or driveway. But at the end of the day, a lot of people watching this will have a house with a driveway, somewhere they can park and where they might think, actually, if I have an electric car, and you might not have solar like me, you might not even have the battery, but you can just go onto a cheap overnight energy tariff. Uh, again, let's just put it in simple terms. Um, if I take my car charger overnight tonight, it's going to cost about £4.80 for completely full, like zero to 100%. And I know that will take me over 300 miles on that Tesla Model 3 there. Uh, so it's quite compelling, isn't it, um, th this argument? And the reason for this video was twofold, really, just to, again, highlight the potential very, very low running costs of an electric car. Plus, there's other various tax savings to be had as well, especially if it's business owned. Um, there are maintenance savings and there are home energy solutions as well which don't necessarily need tons of investment or tens of thousands of pounds. You don't necessarily even need the solar. You can just put batteries in and run the house from that. So that investment though to have solar and solar panels are getting much cheaper now by the way. There are options out there to um, actually have financing for uh, solar battery storage at home. So let's say you could save £150 a month or £200 a month in electricity bills if you're a fairly high energy use home like me. Then if you pay some of that or that per month in a finance deal to get that, then you can see how it can um, offset that quite happily. And therefore, at the end of it, you own something that then makes your property worth more money. And that could be a worthwhile thing as well. So there's a lot of different solutions out there, but I just think a lot of people wouldn't be aware of even that, running battery storage at home but without solar. So I just wanted to kind of highlight that and again, just reiterate just how cheap electric cars can be, even though some of the public charging is quite expensive. There's a massive savings to be had there. Um, so uh, we have no special affiliation with any particular company, but let me give a shout out. Now, we used a company called Naked Solar down in Cornwall that did our system here at work, and I got to meet them through a, a show at Fully Charged a few years ago. Uh, so shout out to Naked Solar, they were great with us here. At home, I use a company called Barry Frampton Limited. Thank you, Paul, uh, for uh, installing the system there. Paul Frampton, Barry Frampton's son. Um, and we've also got on our website, if you look at rcv.co.uk, a link to a company called Egg. And we've been speaking to quite a lot to Egg recently um, because they do home and workplace chargers, and they also do solar and battery installations. Um, so go through the link on our website uh, and it'll take you through to Egg because they also do nice fixed price tariffs for uh, all those things, so home chargers, you can even pay monthly for a charger rather than having to buy outright. You can get financing for your home and solar solutions as well. So you might want to look into that and get some pricing and actually you could find that you would actually still save per month even if you did a financing thing and then you'd own a thing that makes your property worth more money. So uh, worth checking out some of these different solutions. Um, so that's about as quick as I could kind of rattle through that. I hope it made sense. Sorry, it's just me standing here talking about it. Uh, but I hope that's been a useful insight into potential savings of electric vehicles and home energy solutions. So thank you for watching. We'll see you in another video very soon.